Welcome to Sprinkle of Hope podcast with your host, Jason. And today we have an amazing guest with us, Andy Reid. Andy Reid enters his ninth season at the helm of the Kansas City Chiefs in 2021. He was hired as the club's 13th head coach in franchise history on January 7th, 2013, entering his 22nd season as an NFL head coach. Reid is a Super Bowl champion leading his squad to a 31-20 come-from-behind victory in the Super Bowl. Andy, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. You betcha, Jason. It's uh, uh, good to be on. So, Andy, what uh, what is what is your passion other than football? Because I know football has been a huge <laughs> part of your life. So what else right now or, or uh, in general is your passion other than football? Well, it's going to Little League baseball games. I'm, I'm a grandfather of 11, and so uh, that keeps you keeps you awful busy. I'm, I've got a couple of hobbies that I really don't have a ton of time to do now, but I love working with wood, uh, whether it's carving or building whatever. Uh, I've got an old 1928 Ford Model A that I like messing around with. Um, so I, I've got a couple of things on the side. I just don't have a ton of time to to do I'm to sure, do that yeah. yeah right i was going to ask how do you balance that work and life and family and faith and everything you have going on yeah well that's uh you know that's that's what you do you narrow it down to <clears throat> to three things and you kind of name them family faith and football is kind of the direction that you that you go um and so between the work with church um i don't even consider it work but i mean the, the things that you do at church and mm-hmm. responsibilities that you, you have there um, along with the responsibilities that you have is being a husband and, and a father and then a grandfather. So, um, and then football, uh, we've got a couple of responsibilities there too. So, <laughs> um, uh, you, you keeps you, keeps you occupied. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah. So, so how do you, you know, how do you keep a whole team motivated and working together towards the same goal how, how does that how does that work I've been blessed to have some really good guys uh, whether it's in the personnel department whether it's in the coaching department uh, whether it's in the player department so um, and I, I've got an owner that allows me to do my job and all these other people the opportunity to do their job and so it all kind of fits together as this nice puzzle and um, and so that's what we do. We try to trust each other and uh, we, we work hard on all these groups um, that I've mentioned. We all try to work hard and we, we have a common goal um, in, in football. Your common goal is to go win the Super Bowl. Um, but in the immediate time, it's to get yourself better as a player, coach and personnel person and, um, and, and try to maximize your abilities there. And then, uh, and then if everybody does that, then you're, you've got this nice product that you can, you can put out there and, uh, and you trust each other and trust communication, all those things that, that we know in the church. We also know uh, as parents and uh, parts of family, you, you, you know that those are important things. Yeah, I agree. I think trust goes a long way, specifically talking about your team so having won the super bowl how do you personally stay or or continue to learn to stay on top because that's you know that's the pinnacle is the super bowl so how does andy continue to learn how to stay on top yeah so you understand that those are nice accomplishments every team in the national football league that you have an opportunity to coach is a different team so whatever you did in the past is the past. It's great. And it's a compliment to those people that were involved in it. But now you're on to another year. And so that next year, you, you, you got to retool. So it keeps, you, it keeps you humble and consistent and continuing to work hard. And uh, we always talk about process and the, uh, when we're talking about coaches and, and players that you go through this process uh, and it's not easy. It's not good. Things don't come easy. We, we get that. So you've got to work at it. And our, like I said, you, you have to have the right players in the locker room that believe in that and the right coaches to present it. But 
uh, we're fortunate to have that. So the, the guys do work hard. Uh, they eliminate the distractions of all the, uh, the outside noise, wherever you're ranked or not ranked, you know, wherever it sits, you get rid of it and you just keep moving forward and you control those things that you can control and work on those. Yeah. I, I, I like uh, how you said some humility. I think we all need some of that at times. Right. And, and kind of going back to that, um, you know, this last year, you, you guys were so close to, to winning the Super Bowl. you know, you were there. Um, so how do you help get those guys motivated after, you know, kind of a heartbreaking loss in the Super Bowl? You know, you're, you're to that pinnacle. So how do you help kind of motivate them after, you know, after such a tough thing like that happens? Yeah, sure. Now that's, a. Uh, um, that's a challenge for everybody that was involved with that, but we also have an influx of new, new guys. And so that's what makes each year uh, the new challenge. And, and so, um, and then realize what you've done. Let's not yeah. slight the fact that yeah. uh, you're two out of the 32 teams that ended up in the Super Bowl. So let's not put that aside or 14 wins. Let's not put that aside, appreciate it, understand that work that went into it and then move forward into this year, uh, knowing that you, you have a, another chance to do this if you go through this process. And th these are kind of the steps that we're in right now with uh, our off-season program. That's one of the steps that will help us get back there and how we handle each day of that uh, becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So how would you define success? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's individual. Uh, and for whatever field that you're in, but I, I think success is the end of the story, not the beginning of the story. So mm -hmm. I think you have to go through the process to get the success. And then sometimes, listen, sometimes things aren't going to go right and, and maybe you have to try again. So you got to be able to pick yourself off the floor and, and go, okay, this play wasn't very good, I, I, but I'm going to learn from it. I'm a, I'm a absolutely learn from the situation. And I'm a mind tap myself to say, that's not going to happen again. But if it does, I'm coming back to I'm getting off the, the, the off the turf there and I'm going to stand back up and I'm, I'm going to get it right. Yeah. And then you, you build a certain confidence in yourself as you go on a trust. And, and you have to have that uh, in any field. You've got to have uh, the, the ability to to work your mind, which is maybe the strongest muscle that you got in your body. There, so. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not, you're not wrong about that. I, I totally agree with you, Andy, that it, it is your mind. I mean, that is a huge factor in, in any kind of growth, right? Personal growth or, or being a, an excellent football player. Um, so speaking of that, you know, you have, you have some pretty elite athletes that you work with on a, on a daily basis. How do you, do you find that hard to help them grow as, as an athlete or, or how, how do you, how do you help them grow? Yeah. So I've been around some of the great ones, uh, uh, starting back with Reggie White, Sterling Sharp, Brett Favre. I mean, all the, this, uh, the whole evolution of my, my coaching career. And so, um, and I've, I've been close with the Jerry Rices and, and that, that crew there that was made San Francisco go. So um, my, uh, my thing that I noticed from great players is they want, as a coach, they want you to give them one more thing to even make them greater. The great ones mm -hmm. do this. And so they understand that there's a fine line between being great and being average because competition level is so high. So what they do is they seek that out and they, um, they, they take whatever you're going to give them and they're going to try it, not just try it against, in our case, a bag or, uh, you know, they're, they're going to sort it out and do it in a game live or in practice where they they're going against another, another human being in this, again, in this profession. So, um, so I, I relay that I, like you do as a father or grandfather, you use that experience and you relay it uh, to the players and, and they know these old guys that have come before them and, and respect them. They also them grow when they were growing up and, and idolized them. So, uh, we use that history to, to help us uh, with the present. That's great. So we've talked a little bit about how you motivate your players and, and your other coaches, but what motivates you, Andy? 
Yeah, well, I love what I'm doing. I'm one out of 32 in the <laughs> whole world that gets to do what I'm doing. And every day, I, I respect that. And I, I mean, I come to work and I, I joke to players. I said, listen, if I'm not bringing it today, you let me know. <laughs> I'm going to try to give you my best. It's just like I'm telling you to give me your best. I'm going to try to do the same. And yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to bring my best to, to the table. And I'm going to kind of continue to try to grow every day. I mean, I want to learn. And so if a player has a good play, I'm not telling that player, ah, you're a player. I'm not going to No, Give me the play. I, I want to look at it and I want to sort it out and, in my mind. And if, if it works into what we're, let's, let's throw this thing out there and go, go with it. So, um, you know, that it's a, I think it's an attitude and, and how you approach things uh, the, the, in this business. That, and I think probably any business, you know, are you going to be an energy giver or are you going to be an energy taker? Mm -hmm. So how, how are you going to present yourself uh, to people? And, and so my thing is I'm, when I'm coming, when I get out of bed and I'm coming at you, I'm coming at you and I want to learn <laughs> and I want to get better. So um, that's how, that's how we go. I love it. I do love it. So what, uh, what is something you enjoy doing in the off season? So football ends what's Andy Reid doing yeah um well right <laughs> football's year round <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah so it, uh right now we're in our phase three OTA practices and and um uh, and so it's a full day I mean we're, we go and and then when the players aren't here we we prepare and make sure that we've got a uh, format for them and uh, you know that they can follow the next day and make sure that they can uh, they can too learn along with us. So, um, uh, that's, uh, that's what we're doing now. I, and then we'll finish this up and then the coaches have a month off and I've got a place in California that I like to go to and, and relax. And normally the family is all together, um, in complete chaos, but it's all together, um, <laughs> on the 4th of July. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, a so that, that's kind of where, <laughs> where I go in the off season we, but between the draft and free agency and the combine, mm -hmm. all these things that lead up to the draft, uh, you, you keep yourself real busy, uh, at the job. It sounds like you just have a little short break right in the middle of the summer and then you're right back at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We pick a few days in between there, but it's, uh, <laughs> for the most part, that's, we kind of look forward to that, that block of time. Yeah. I, I would imagine that. Yeah. So what's your biggest challenge that you're faced with as your role as a coach? Yeah, well, listen, I, I think we all know you want to keep, you got to keep your closet clean. If you're going to make sure you want other people to keep their closets clean. And so you're, you're, you're put in a position of leadership and an example. And, and if you're not doing it right, then they're not going to do it right. And, and so I understand that and I respect it. And, um, and, and so and if I'm asking the players to grow, I've got to grow. All those things. So I, you can't do one without the other. And, um, and so that's how, that's how I approach it. I do it with honesty. I'm, uh, it's, sometimes it's hard because this is their livelihood. Yeah. And I respect that. And, but there's a time, and, and probably the toughest part of the job, there's a time when you got to tell a guy, hey, listen, it's either over or it's over here, but let me help you get on somewhere else yeah. and uh, but that's the reality of, of the profession so that, that ends up being probably the hardest thing that that, that you've got to do uh, but be honest with them and mm -hmm. if they're doing good don't be afraid to tell them they're doing good <laughs> and we're all humans and we all like a little pat on the back somewhere so let's not be afraid to tell them when they're doing good or or coach them up and teach right we all know we're here to teach so uh let's use that and and teach uh the guys how to be better and, and if they can all make money um and, and be able to support their families and uh and whatever adventures they have after they're done playing um I, i'm all in on that i'm gonna try to give you the tools to be able to do that to make to truly make this a, a living mm -hmm. and again i have the support of our our owner to to do that which that's not the way it is at every in every organization i mean there's uh, every every organization is a little different in how they operate, but we're, we're fortunate here. Yeah, this is this has been such a uh, wonderful conversation, 
Andy. And so right at, right at kind of the very end of our podcast recording, Shane and I, we, we do a thing called the double down dose. Um, and so oh <laughs> it, it's not scary. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but the first question I have for you is what is the definition of hope? Because our, our, our uh, podcast is sprinkled with hope. And we, so we talk a lot about that. And what is, what is Andy's definition of hope? Yeah, so I think every day that you wake up and uh, and you have an opportunity to get better at whatever you're going to choose, I think that that's hope, right? I, I have a I have a chance in this country. Um, if we're willing to work, w- we have a chance. And whatever capacity you have to learn, uh, there's still opportunity there, and you you've got to find that, and then you've got to have that intestinal fortitude to allow that to drive you uh, to find whatever whatever that is mm-hmm. but, but that to me is that's hope uh, we're and we're look, more than any other country now we've lasted a lot longer or and and actually the longest of any uh government that, that's been out there so we we've had a we have opportunity we just have to go do it yeah i agree with that that's uh, that's, that's hope yeah very good. So the second part of Double Down Dose today is how would you define love? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I think there's there's love of a person and then there's a love of what you're doing. Uh, but it, it's something that uh, either one that you can't control. Um, I, you fall in love with a person, you go, man, I didn't think that was going to happen. Or maybe it you saw it, and it was love at first sight, you know, and I'm but whatever it is, it's, that's, that's in the heart. I mean, that's, and then as far as a job goes, I mean, I love doing what I'm doing. That doesn't mean there's not ups and downs. It's mm-hmm. like when you fall in love with a person that you know, everybody's not perfect, but your mistakes will cover up my weakness and my mistakes will cover up. I mean, my strengths will cover up your weakness. And, and so, um, you know, that's how you, that's how you roll with it. And, and so, but with a job, I, I think if you if you have the right mindset, you enjoy what you're doing, uh, then you have an opportunity to to love it and be true to yourself. Uh, not something that you're not. It, it, some people say, I think I'm going to really like doing that. And then they get into it. And it's like a, a downer. Well, you know, that's that's a that's bad love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not no. good. No. Well, be true Andy, to yourself. This- this has been an amazing discussion. I, I've really enjoyed your insight onto things. I think, you know, we've talked about football, but I think we can apply what you're saying to life in general and uh, really use those lessons that you're teaching us and your team uh, in any situation. So, Andy, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Shane. And Jason, thank you. Um, it's been fun. <laughs> give your give your pops a big hug. <laughs> I will. Absolutely will. Thank you so much for coming on All with right. us today, Andy. Okay. Be safe. We'll you do. Too. Thank you.